Mama Cat. George. Hello, parrot lovers and fellow sniffers. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is Cody, my beautiful African Grey. And today, we are here to welcome you to Parent Tip Tuesday. For today's Parent Tip Tuesday, we're going to talk about positive reinforcement and how important it is to get your bird to behave the way you want him to behave. Before I go on, I thought I would tell you a little riddle because I feel like this riddle is a great insight into the psyche of parrots, although it has nothing to do with parrots at all. You may have heard this, so here's the riddle. There's a serial killer. <laughs> Cody likes that already. He kills a girl. When he kills the girl, he shows up to her funeral, as you know, sometimes psycho serial killers do. They want to see their work in action. When he shows up to the funeral, he sees the girl's sister and he falls in love with the sister. He thinks she's just beautiful and gorgeous. After that, he decides to kill the mother. Why does the serial killer do that? Cody, why does he do that? If you guys want, you can pause this video and write in the comment section why you think he does this and then we'll see if you're right. So take a moment. Okay, did you write it down? Here's the answer. The serial killer killed her mother because he wanted to see the sister again. What does this have to do with parrots? Well, I always call my birds little serial killers. Especially my African Grey, George. I always called him a serial killer after this story. And I'll tell you why. Birds don't view punishment in the way you imagine they would. A lot of the times, you yelling at a bird, saying no, or giving him any kind of attention for something that he did wrong is good attention. For birds, any publicity is good publicity, especially if you have a good relationship with your bird because he wants that from you. So let me give you an example. George and Picasso were best friends. For those of you guys who are new to my channel, Picasso is my mustache parakeet, George was my African gray. They used to sit on top of the shower with me. Every so often they would quarrel, but rarely. They really wanted to be with each other all of the time. But if George couldn't see me, sometimes he would peck at Picasso and Picasso would scream or fly and land. And then I would run in and give Picasso attention and play with Picasso and just love on him. You would think that George would get the idea, oh, don't do this, she gives Picasso attention. But he didn't. He would do it over and over again because I would run in and he wanted to see me. Because birds, they want to see you. They always want you in their presence. Again, that is if you have a good relationship with your bird, but that's the way they are. After a while, when I was able to reduce that negative behavior by using positive reinforcement, George would stop picking on Picasso, but here's the most interesting thing. When I wasn't in the room, but I was in earshot and my bird knew it, he would make the noises of Picasso screaming, of him flying. Remember, he's an African gray, so he's able to do so many sounds and noises that a human can't even do. So he would repeat that exact sound without picking on Picasso at all, just to get me to run in. And I would realize that he's doing the sounds because he realized that they were just as effective. He stopped his behavior, but he used his talents to make it look like he was a bad bird just so that I would run in and he could see me, which always reminded me of the serial killer scenario. Now, George was aware of what behaviors I did not want him to engage in. And I knew this because very interestingly, if one of my other birds would do those behaviors, he would tell him not to do it or no. Let's go over why it's really important to figure out how to use positive reinforcement 
for your parent instead of negative reinforcement. So for example, if you're to say no to your bird or to become aggressive with your bird or put him back when he does something wrong, a lot of these times these things do not work. I want to address something. Sometimes your bird may do something that you may not want him to do, but he's wanting or in need of attention. And before you react in any way, it's a good idea to assess the situation. What is the bird trying to tell you? Because birds don't have a hundred ways of communicating with you. Are they good communicators? Yes, excellent communicators. Those of you who own African greys and many parrots, you know how amazingly they can communicate. But if a bird is doing something that you don't want him to do, he may just be in need of your attention and maybe you need to address that first. Let me give you an example to make this more clear. Rocky is in love with George. Rocky is my harlequin macaw. He was previously very aggressive and locked in a cage for 10 years. Sometimes Rocky will walk up to George, that's his human that he's in love with, and he will start pecking at his shoes, kind of like tugging and biting. Obviously, for George, the human, this is not a pleasurable behavior. His instinct may be to say, Rocky, stop, stop. He may think that's a good idea to get Rocky to stop. But often, I'll say to George, let's stop and think. How many options does this bird have to tell you that he wants or needs attention right now? Well, one, he can scream. Two, he can come over and do exactly what he's doing on your shoes or he could bite you there's many things that he could do so are you in a position to give him attention instead of using this as a training because i think that rocky right now is just in need of some attention and he realizes that you are somewhat available so pick him up and give him that attention that he needs now i tell you guys this all the time most of the time when a bird screams he wants something whether it be attention, food, toy, boredom, there's so many reasons why birds scream. And if you know your birds really well and you have other birds in your flock, you'll learn that they're just like kindergartners. This one has a toy, I want a toy. You're playing with something, I want it. You have something, I want to see what it's like too. Birds are so much like that. So you could get very detailed with what it is that they want. But if they are screaming or biting, a lot of the times they want something. First thing that you should do is decide, is there something that the bird wants that I can give them right now? Before you even focus on positive or negative reinforcement, I believe that in the situation with Rocky and George, George was in a situation to give the bird attention and he should have just picked him up and hung out with him and that is exactly what he did and it worked out for both the bird and George. If you guys only remember one thing from this video, I want you to remember to think like your bird. Look at your bird, put yourself in his position and think to yourself, how many ways does this bird have to communicate with me? Yes, he tugged at me, he bit me, but what is he trying to say that he needs? First, I want you to address that. Now, let's go on to negative behaviors. I like to do this by giving you guys examples because I feel like the visuals help a lot. Here's an example. Let's say Cody was heading towards something. Maybe he's on a countertop and he's going to eat the wall. And I know it because I've seen him do it before. But Cody also likes attention. And if you have a really good bond with your bird, your bird generally will love attention and will love to be with you more. So let's say Cody is walking towards the wall to chew it. I can go up to Cody and be like, no, no, bad bird. But that's going to give Cody the attention that he wants. Remember, any publicity is good publicity for a parrot. Second of all, it can make your bird aggressive if you don't have a relationship with your bird. Never approach your bird like you want to hit him or strike him or do anything threatening to your parrot because he's just going to get threatening back towards you and you're going to lose that trust in the relationship. However, you may have more success with calling the bird over to you or showing him a treat or tempting him with something else that he is allowed to have and that he likes. And when he comes over to you, 
you reward him with the treat or a good bird or a head scratch and make a really big deal about it because remember, they are children. So keep in mind, it's a lot better to bring your bird towards you with the use of positive reinforcement than to freak out and yell at him or punish him if he does something bad somewhere else. I am in so many of these situations. Right now, he's biting my shirt and he's gonna bite me. Now, when Cody's biting me, it's a good idea to not react. If you have a bird that is going to chop your fingers off, uh, you may not be able to do that. And I'll be the one to tell you I understand you because so many parrot trainers are like, don't react when your parrot bites. And they are right. But sometimes your bird bites in a way that is really hard not to react. So the best thing to do is to not let him continue to bite you, but try to react as minimally as possible. So if you need to pull away, that's okay, but try to remain cool, calm, and collected. Now, Cody bites, as you can see right now, it's a little bit nearing his bedtime, so he's getting cranky, which is also an important thing to consider. Birds are just like us. They get cranky when they're hungry and when they're tired. So when you are training your parrot, make sure you're doing it at times that are beneficial to the bird. And when they are cranky and angry, like Cody is now, right? Who's to blame, him or me? Well, I'm keeping him up right now. It's almost his bedtime. So I have to understand that and give my parrot that kind of respect. You see, he moves very fast right now whenever I move. He's in need of his bedtime, which is a really good example for you guys. But remember, let's say you have a biting bird like Cody. Let's say it's not too bad. Okay. Often, if you have a parrot like Cody that is attached to you and loves being with you and hanging out with you, keep in mind that when birds like that bite, they're trying to tell you something. But if you react to it, you're often rewarding it. So for example, we're sitting here right now. If Cody was to feel a little bit bored and he bit my lip or my ear and I turned around and said, Cody, don't do that. Cody would be getting the exact reaction that he felt he was missing, attention. So he's going to do it again. And that's why it's important to not react if your bird bites you. It's better to ignore those behaviors. As hard as it is, it's much better to ignore the behavior and continue on as if it didn't happen. But with that being said, I know I repeat myself, is the behavior justified? Does the bird need something that he feels he's not getting? I mean, think about it. We did get a companion. So if they're in need of some sort of interaction or attention, consider that first always. So if you have a good bird that is giving you a little nibble or a bite when you don't want it, are they maybe a little bit justified and that's one of the few ways they know to get your attention? Just think about that and try to read the bird's body language. Now, what about a timeout? I'm actually not 100% opposed to a timeout, but if you do want to give your bird timeout, it's important to know some things. First off, timeout should only last for about five minutes. If you put your bird back in the cage as punishment and then just go about your day, then the bird is not going to understand that he did something wrong. He's not going to understand the difference between you putting him back because you have to go out or you putting him back because he was punished. It's a better idea to put him away for five minutes and then after that time is up, bring him out and interact with him positively again. However, if you can change the unwanted behavior through positive reinforcement, that will be a much better long-term solution for getting rid of the unwanted behavior in your parrot. Here's another important thing to note. Your bird has to know exactly why he is going in timeout. So you can't have a delayed response to the timeout. If he does something wrong, you can't wait a little bit and then put him in timeout. It has to be directly after what he did. But remember, if you're not reacting to what he did, if he's screaming and you're not reacting, if he bit you and you're not reacting, then he's going to start to learn anyway that he's not getting much reaction out of you and it's not getting him the attention that he wanted 
anyway. So keep that in mind. But if you feel like you still need to give your bird a timeout, just remember that it has to be clear to the bird what he did exactly. I believe that most bad behaviors can be resolved without a timeout, but there are reasons that I would give my bird a timeout. For example, if a bird did something to a guest, obviously you have to warn your guests before they come in, but things happen. If the bird was a little bit aggressive toward a guest, I would put the bird away just so the guest feels comfortable and so the bird knows that this is what he did and then later you can bring the bird out and reintroduce him to the situation, maybe in a safe place on a stand where he's not harmful to anybody else. Let's talk about screaming specifically because this is an unwanted behavior that's really popular. I'm guilty of giving my bird what he wants when he screams. But because of that, I find that my birds, all five of them, don't scream a lot. I can actually have a very quiet household. I've deciphered exactly what it is that my bird wants when he is screaming. So most of the time, if Rocky is screaming, because let's be honest, he has such a loud voice if he does scream, I've already figured out that at this time he wants his TV, at this time he wants his nuts, at this time he wants to hang out outside, or he wants love. I figured these things out. Also because I have my birds on a little bit of a routine. Now if you've watched my past videos on routine, you'll see how important routine is to birds and how they may scream if you change their routine. So figuring out what kind of routine they're used to can absolutely aid in the reduction of screaming in your parrot because they get used to certain steps of the day and they think to themselves, this is how it goes. And new things that they enjoy, they'll scream for because they had it yesterday. And it's your job to figure out, what did I do at this time yesterday that he may be screaming for now? And see if that fixes the problem. And a lot of the time it will. So I would advise you to watch my video on routine for parrots because I think that will help a lot in preventing the screaming. Now, of course, there are many times when Rocky screams and I haven't figured it out yet. If I do figure it out based on the routine analyzation, then I will fix it and go about what it is. But if he's screaming and it seems impossible to fix what he's screaming about, in that case, it's a better idea to quietly ignore the screaming, don't respond to it, don't look at him, and think in your head what it could possibly be before you take action. If the bird sees you running around in a hundred different directions trying to please it, your bird is going to learn that that's what he should do when he wants something, scream. Because then he's gonna see you running around trying to make him happy. So it's a better idea to think clearly what it could be and test out those few options because that's good for you guys in the future. I want you to understand that I'm not saying you must know every single thing that your bird wants and give it to him like he's a spoiled child and then you'll prevent his screaming. What I'm saying is birds are in a position where they only have so many ways to communicate, right? Their voices are loud and if they are screaming, they do want something. So if you can make their lives a little bit easier and a little bit more pleasurable by working with them to understand what they are trying to tell you because we know they speak but it's not always that they'll be like hey ma I was thinking I need this at 10 o'clock at night will they be able to convey that message sure you parrot owners know how smart our birds are and how much they actually do tell us but if you've hit a roadblock and you're not understanding that's just a tool that I like to give you guys to figure out how to prevent the screaming and how to understand what it is that your bird is trying to say to you. You guys may realize that Cody has been getting a little bit aggressive with my shoulder. I'm ignoring it. I don't know if you could see that, but he was biting the back of my shoulder. The reason I'm ignoring it is because if I give him any attention for it, he's going to continue to do it because it's not just my attention he wants now. He wants me to stop this video and take him downstairs to hang out or to go to bed. So if I gave him a little bit of attention, then he would continue his negative behavior to get the rest of what he wants. 
he would feel like he has my attention and therefore he can show me by biting me more what else he wants to do. So he's calmed down because I'm not giving into it. Now that's not an example of positive reinforcement by any means. That's just an example of ignoring the behavior so that I'm not encouraging it because he realizes then that he's not gonna get any attention from me for doing it. And remember, attention is the core of every single bird. One, because that's what they want from you, but two, they don't have many ways to express exactly what they need. So just keep that in mind and have a little bit of sympathy for your parrots before you decide how to react. Positive reinforcement can also be a great tool to changing the direction of a behavior that you don't want your bird to do. You can train your birds through positive reinforcement. You can train your birds how to fly to you. You can potty train your parrot. If you watch my video on potty training your parrot, you'll see that it does no good to yell at your bird if he goes potty somewhere in the house, because let's be honest, that's what he's gonna do. Much better to gauge when your bird is going to go potty and move him to a spot and congratulate him when he does and eventually that combined with flight training, you'd be surprised how you can train your bird to fly to go potty and come back. So remember, you're gonna get a lot more out of your parrot through positive reinforcement, through the use of treats, through the use of an exciting tone, giving your bird love and affection and attention when he does something right. So remember, in a nutshell, right Cody, in a nutshell, if your bird is doing something naughty, it's a better idea to divert the behavior towards something positive and then reward your bird for doing the positive behavior because that's what they will remember, what they got the reward, the treat, the love, or the affection from. So let's recap really, really quick. First thing you wanna do is assess the situation. What is my bird trying to tell me? And see if it's something you need to adjust. The second thing is, do not reward any negative behavior. Try not to react. Any kind of no or loud words is just going to give your bird the attention that it wants. Also, never get aggressive with your bird because your bird will lose trust with you and he will get aggressive back. Keep that in mind. And more importantly, positive reinforcement. If you can divert the situation and create a positive situation and reward your bird for that, that will always be a better idea. You can train your bird that way, you can flight train your bird that way, you can teach your bird tricks, and you'll have a better relationship with your parrot. So if you take one thing from this video, please remember to imagine the voice of your parrot. What is he trying to say? What does he need? And if you address that first, and then work with some positive reinforcement, I think you and your parrot will have a great relationship. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please follow me on social media. You're welcome to come join my parrots and I on Instagram, at Marlene McCohen. I use my Instagram kind of like a Snapchat, so you get to see me and my birds all day long and some cute pictures of them because I just love them so much. And if you want to be featured on my Instagram page, Engage Not Cage, then hashtag Engage Not Cage and I will share some of your parrot pictures. I look forward to seeing you guys there and best of the best, come join Parrot Station. Parrot Station is my Facebook group for parrot lovers like yourself Come introduce your bird, post pictures, post videos, let us see your birds, get to know your birds. There's a great community there of other people that can help you with your questions, people that really care. Remember, no bullying. I don't want you to go on and bully anyone and tell them how to raise their bird. Just help them if they need some help or are asking questions. I want this to be a fun group that's educational, but cute, and just enjoy the videos, guys. Just enjoy the videos and the birds. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. Bye, little sniffers.